I figure I'll go ahead and give you a quick workaround, something I learned many, many years ago when I was calibrating these oscilloscopes and stuff like that. And the reason why I'll give you a, this workaround is because I noticed that a lot of people that go ahead and buy, of course, these um, vintage oscilloscopes and stuff like that, they'll go ahead and buy every piece of calibrator that's recommended on the service manual to go ahead and do it and stuff like that. Now, that would have been great 30 plus years ago when it was readily available. There still were VIN calibration and all that other stuff. But now that times pass by, a lot of times you can't even find most of the calibrators that you need. That's the first problem. Second problem, if you do find it, it's going to be overpriced. And then the biggest problem is, is a lot of times it's going to be out of calibration or it's even going to be non-functional and you're going to have to do repairs on it. And then calibrate that piece of equipment to calibrate the oscilloscope that you're planning on calibrating so one of the things that in the service manual that's recommended to actually calibrate this oscilloscope of course is a time marker generator now i do have one but i figure i'll go and take the opportunity and show you another way of doing it without having to use a time marker generator and that is using a pulse generator essentially now this thing was calibrated by a laboratory just a few months ago because i had the repairs on it and right now, I'll give you an example. I got this set at one micro center, two volt peak to peak, as the service manual recommends. And I'll go and show you the markers. And then here's your markers. And you can see your markers right there. And essentially, in this part of the um, calibration, it requires that the markers, of course, are lined up right on the lines right there from beginning all the way to the end. And then if it's not, then you got to go ahead and adjust the pod. To bring it where they are lined up and stuff in this part of the calibration and stuff and once you get done doing it then obviously you can go on to the next step and then complete that um calibration process and stuff like that but that's a workaround just use a decent post generator that's pretty much within calibration stuff and you can use it as a time marker generator to um do your calibration stuff now there is no workaround unfortunately with a level signal generator of course and a post generator you do need those and also you need your itinerators and of course the cable and stuff like that to be able to do your calibration and stuff like that. But I figure I'll go ahead and give you that workaround so you're not tempted to go on eBay and buy the exact calibrator that's recommended on the service manual and overpay for it to realize it's not working and so forth. So one of the common mistakes that I also see a lot done when they're doing their calibrations is, is that people will use um their micro screwdrivers to go ahead and adjust the pods and stuff like that now the problem with doing that is is actually you're creating capacitors just by touching it and of course you go ahead and do your alignment and then you realize it's perfect and then you go ahead and just spent a few minutes doing that take your hand off take the adjustment tool off of course and stuff and then realize it just went back out or the other way and the reason for it is because you're creating capacitance and stuff like that so you want to use a plastic tool like this here this works fine or a fully plastic one to go ahead and actually adjust the pods and stuff like that then therefore you're not creating that capacitance and it makes it much much easier when you're doing the calibration because you're not going back and forth constantly when you take it off trying to get it dialed in because you're creating capacitance and stuff like that, and then it goes right back out as soon as you take the adjustment tool off use a proper adjustment tool and you'll be perfectly fine and now for the last common mistake that I see that's kind of critical is that I see a lot of people that will let the scope obviously warm up because you have to let it warm up to stabilize for an hour or two and stuff like that. But they'll let it warm up about the cover and no fan blowing across it. Now in this particular model it's not a problem but on the 2400 series where you got a lot of ASICs and amplifiers and stuff like that on the bottom side of the board obviously you got to have the case removed now. The problem with that though is because the fans in the rear it's not giving airflow because you took the baffle off essentially. So the way you have to do when you have the scope obviously on its side, you know, going vertical instead of horizontal and stuff like that, because you gotta get to adjustment pods and stuff like that, is to simply have a desktop fan right there blowing across all the hybrids like the C C D and the horizontal amplifier and all that other stuff to keep it nice and cool because if you don't do that 
you end up blowing those ICs up pretty much and stuff like because they'll have thermal runaway and they'll end up overheating and stuff like that or damaging the connection in the die and stuff like that. And I had to repair a lot of 2400 series scopes because a lot of people have done that or the fans failed in the rear, which is the reason why I did the fan mod video about a few years back on those scopes and stuff like that because the fans are notorious for failing and they'll cause those hybrids to overheat and stuff like that. And now you got to go ahead and place the horizontal amplifier that typically goes bad on them or the CCD on some of them and stuff like that because they will fail. Now, there's two ways you can bring up the calibration aid to actually do the alignment of the digital board, essentially, and stuff like that. One way, of course, is the way that a lot of people know. And we'll turn it on. Let it kind of come up real quick. Hopefully, it'll come up pretty quick. And that is exactly to go to the menu setting. Then, of course, you go down here and use the switches to go down. And you can go to the advanced menu there, and then you can go to, of course, the, you know, diagnostic menu, and then there's your calibration aids. That's one way to do it. Now, the other way to do it is, of course, you hold down one of these display options here while you power it up. And it should pop up. And then there you go, and then there's your calibration to align the digital board with the analog section, essentially, and stuff like that. And you can see it's aligned pretty much. And then you go to the next step, and then you align that, and then there you go, pretty much. But that's how you bring up the calibration aids on these. Of course, before you go ahead and do the digital board, you have to do, of course, the analog section, which is the CRT geometry, the vertical, horizontal. And, of course, the trigger before you can even get to that step. But I figure I'll go ahead and show you the other way of doing it. If, for some reason, your buttons are not all working correctly on there and stuff to pull up the calibration aid on there for the digital board and stuff like that. And you do want to get that aligned, too, as well. So, after a few hours of completing all the calibration procedures of the Tektronics 22 Dirty, which was successful... Calibration is fully done, and I mean, I'm happy with the results because before I couldn't do this go to normal trigger, it would actually shift it over, and I would have to adjust the position every time in the trigger level. And now it's absolutely perfect. And then here I can go to storage board, which was a little bit out, and now it's absolutely perfect as well, too. And you can see there, I'm feeding a one kilohertz signal, which is correct. Now, this line that's like there that's actually supposed to be there because that's showing that i have the gpib option in there and stuff and the address as you can see because this was before the time they started putting the leds as replacer for it. they would actually put it on the screen but there you go and then here i'll go ahead and show you another thing let's go ahead and do square wave and then i'll show you the square wave absolutely perfect square wave and same thing with the storage mode too enabled. Yep, so it's bang on on everything. Vertical, horizontal, and trigger is all working correctly now. And even the digital side's working 100%. So I'm quite happy actually. And then here, I'll go ahead and stop that real quick. And we'll go ahead and just feed it in some noise. Absolutely beautiful. Can't ask for better than that. And then we'll go back to sine wave. Yep, so took a few hours to do the calibration, but well, well worth it. That's all I got to say. So I guess this completes definitely now 100% the Tektronix 22 Dirty 100 megahertz digital slash analog storage oscilloscope.